Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today I've got a practice question for you. This is related to the genitourinary system. So on exam day, you can expect a handful of questions related to the genitourinary system, somewhere between two and five questions. So really not a very large system on the exam, but definitely one where you want to get all two to five of those correct. And so that's my hope here today is to help you with some of the content related to that. As a reminder, as we go through this podcast, we're going through the FSBPT's published content outline. Now, as you know, every five years, they update the FSBPT content outline in an effort to reflect what an entry-level physical therapist will likely encounter in their first year of practice. And so with that in mind, that's the goal here is to talk through, uh, obviously, content that is applicable to entry-level practice that's relevant to not only your your final terms, your your final clinicals as a third year PT student, but also once you enter the workforce and for the first year, it really is reflective of what you are likely to encounter. Now, uh, just of note, just a little bit of a FSBPT philosophy here for you. They, They expect that as you go through an accredited DPT program, that you are encountering and having lots of experience with your clinical hands-on skills. And that's part of their accreditation process is to make sure that you have this sufficient hands-on skills. And so I talk to students all the time who report to me that they have excellent interpersonal skills, they have excellent rapport with their patients. And so the NPTE, the examination then, is really based on the content and principles behind all of that. And so with that in mind, just to, again, uh, to make a small reference here, uh, in the, what is it, the physiotherapy competency, competency exam in Canada, it has both an academic portion, which is very similar to the NPT, as well as a clinical portion where you have to go in in person on site and do a full clinical experience or a full clinical evaluation. All that to say that uh, I'm glad I didn't have to do that. That sounds like a pain, but it was obviously a, pain, a painful process all the way through PT school, and you've all experienced that to this point. And so now we head into exam day where you are going to encounter academic content and the base principles behind everything. Uh, You just have to have them applied to patient cases, patient scenarios, there will be videos and images, all of that as a part of your NPTE experience. So, uh, and then I guess just the other thing I, I, I really do want to tell you, thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for all the efforts you put into this. Thank you for the hard work you put into studying and becoming an excellent clinician. I know that it will not only bless your life, but the lives of, of all those you serve and their families for, for many years to come. So thank you for all of that. All right, let's go ahead and dive into our practice question for today. Again, this is related to the, to the genital urinary system examination. I will read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we will talk about it together. Here we go. A 65-year-old male with benign prosthetic hyperplasia reports frequent urination, urgency, and nocturia. Which of the following mechanisms best explains these symptoms? So again, a 65-year-old male with benign prostatic hyperplasia reports frequent urination, urgency, and nocturia. Which of the following mechanisms best explains these symptoms? Uh, Option one, reduced detrusor muscle contractility leading to urinary retention. Two, increased bladder compliance reducing urinary urgency. Three, detrusor muscle relaxation during voiding, resulting in weakened urine stream. Or four, uncontrolled detrusor contractions causing overactive bladder symptoms. So again, we've got a 65-year-old male with benign prosthetic hyperplasia with frequent urination, urgency, and nocturia, which the following mechanisms best explains these symptoms. A one, reduced detrusor muscle contractility leading to urinary retention. Two, increased bladder compliance, reducing urinary urgency. Three, detrusor muscle relaxation during voiding, resulting in a weakened urine stream. Or four, uncontrolled detrusor contractions causing overactive bladder symptoms. All right, so this question, as you consider benign prosthetic hyperplasia, you will note that it is an obstructive condition that is the prostate, which is typically the size of a walnut, As it increases in size, it's going to pinch off and block the flow of urine in the urethra. So one of the things you're probably expecting in this question is something related to a some type of overflow incontinence. And you're not wrong. Overflow incontinence is when you have usually some type of either obstruction or hypoactivity of the of the detrusor muscle. 
In this case, what happens is the mechanism is the correct answer is at number four. The detrusor muscle has to work harder and harder in order to evacuate the bladder. And that makes sense, right? If there's an obstruction, it has to work harder and harder in order to get the urine to flow through, through that obstructed urethra. Now, eventually what happens is you develop hypertrophy of the detrusor muscle and of the lower portion of the bladder called the trigone. So as you have that hyperactivity and hyper hypertrophy, <laughs> a lot of hypers here, so hypertrophy of that detrusor muscle, what ends up happening is you get that, uh, basically it, it acts a lot like spasticity of the detrusor muscle. So you get these uninhibited detrusor contractions. It mimics urge incontinence because you'll get these sudden powerful urges to urinate, but you will be unable to do so because of the blockage in the urethra. So very literally for benign prostatic hyperplasia, in early stages, you'll probably have a lot of overflow incontinence just because you, you have difficulty, difficulty evacuating the bladder because of the block urethra. But then that cascades into an urge incontinence where as, as you have that blockage last longer and longer, you get the hypertrophy of the detrusor muscle. All of that leads to these urge type symptoms. So it is very, very literally the case you could have urge symptoms and overflow symptoms concurrently re regarding urinary incontinence. You, know, you can have both urge and overflow incontinence in someone with benign prostatic hyperplasia just because of that excessive and extra work and hyper, hypertrophy that occurs with the, the detrusor muscle. And I keep mixing up the words hyperplasia. That's what's happening with the prostate. You get the, this excessive enlargement of the prostate gland. That's hyperplasia. Hypertrophy, I'm referring to the muscular, the, the, the muscular response on the detrusor muscle which is the bladder muscle. That's what evacuates the bladder. So all that to say that what eventually happens with benign prosthetic hyperplasia, they can get this urgency, which is related to uh, an uninhibited detrusor muscle contraction over time because you get that hypertrophy of the detrusor muscle. So there you go. That is the, the long and short of it for benign prosthetic hyperplasia. Again, it, it's extremely... For men over the age of 50, it's one of those things that requires frequent screening. They do the, the uh, you can do a urinary sample to determine how much, or if there is the, the case of uh, benign prosthetic hyperplasia, it's called the PSA, the prostate specific antigen test. So you can take a urine sample and get the PSA levels. And anyway, that, that's how you screen for it. Now you as a PT, you'll obviously be this, you'd be a screening mechanism as the patient is talking with you. And if they describe something like this, you'd likely refer them back to their primary care provider to make sure they get adequate care. Uh, the other thing to note here is that for, uh, until you solve the prostate problem, the, the only other things you can really work with are pelvic floor muscle strengthening but again, that's that's going to take a a a back seat to the the treatment directly of the prostate. And so uh, the other thing that I would just add here that you as a PT can help reinforce is that if they are having these urge type symptoms, it will be best to keep them on a fluid schedule. And so what does that look like? It just means that you would you would have a a a normalized and scheduled amount of fluid intake during the day. Uh, clearly, it's just about scheduled intake and scheduled avoiding. So with that in mind, that if you have scheduled intake, scheduled avoiding, it helps to reduce the symptoms related to an urge incontinence. So fluid, yeah, fluid scheduling can be can be very helpful here. Uh, certainly nothing wrong with, um, with doing some pelvic floor muscle strengthening. Uh, one of the other things that, that Goodman describes is having what they call a, a double voiding meaning that the patient will attempt to void their bladder, then they relax, take a break, and then try again. So it's a kind of, it's a double voiding. <laughs> you, you void once, uh, do what you can, and then uh, a moment later, a minute later, you retry, and that can also be helpful at, at uh, evacuating the bladder and making for a more, uh, a more comfortable situation. We'll just put it like that. 
All right, so with that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. Appreciate you taking the time to spend with me as we go through content here in the NPT podcast. Uh, be sure to head over to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast to take advantage of all the freebies we've got. Got a lot of great stuff going on for this as I'm recording this. This is for the July NPT administration. Make sure to yeah stay tuned for all that. We've got some great freebies, giveaways, and discounts coming your way. You won't want to miss that ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. And again, if you haven't taken a moment to review, please leave us a quick five-star review wherever it is you're listening to this podcast. So in the meantime, give yourself a good Will Crane fist bump when you get something right. Give yourself a, or keep a grin on your chin. Take good care of yourself. Have a fabulous day, everyone. We'll catch you all in the next one. Thank you.